When we started the Ingaba's African Genome Challenge, we were confident that researchers in Africa have great projects and we never doubted receiving interesting and well thought submissions, as we have. We are now in the voting stages of the competition and we will share how the process will unfold at the end of the video. It's time to get those campaigns going. All videos received will be shared on our YouTube channel under the different categories, which are vertebrates, invertebrates and microbes, metagenomics, plants, East Africa and West Africa. We encourage viewers to watch all the videos, then you can vote to choose which one you think is best to win under the respective category. On the next category, we have products that include animals with a spinal cord or a backbone, human beings included. Here are videos on vertebrates. In the TUSK project, we investigate the cancer resistance of elephants. This starts with the collection of samples at Botlischkop Game Reserve with the assistance of a wildlife veterinarian. He takes blood and skin biopsy samples of free-roaming elephants who have to be sedated for medical surveillance and vaccination. This project was founded after several reports illustrated that large, long-living mammals such as elephants and whales are more resistant to cancer development than humans. This phenomenon is considered to be a paradox in the animal world, also known as Pitus paradox. It basically comes down to the fact that if the cells of elephants would be equally susceptible to cancer development as human cells, then we would expect an increase in cancer risk with body size and lifespan, but the opposite is true. At the Temba Labs, the elephant samples are irradiated in order to induce damage to the DNA. 
The way the cells respond to DNA damage teaches us more on how elephants manage to cull the cells that carry mutations that could potentially lead to cancer. Elephants have multiple copies of a crucial tumor suppressor gene TP53, while humans have only one copy of this gene. Our cell death and DNA repair results at the Temba labs clearly illustrate the working mechanism of this special gene. But this does not cover the whole story, and therefore we would need PAC biosequencing. Up until now, no PAC biosequencing has been performed on the elephant genome, and we are convinced that this could shed light on unknown mechanisms that play a role in their cancer resistance, which could be crucial in the development of new strategies to prevent and treat cancer in humans. Hi there, my name is Tina Mering and I'm a PhD student in the Division of Molecular Biology and Human Genetics at Stellenbosch University. And my project involves investigating the genetic diversity of wild dogs from the Kruger National Park. African wild dogs are critically endangered, with small wild dog populations that are left are vulnerable to many threats such as environmental changes, hunting by humans and disease, causing the populations to become even smaller. This leads to a loss of genetic diversity which is the variability of genes in a species. Genetic diversity determines the potential fitness of a population or how well they can respond and adapt to threats. Conservationists and veterinarians try to implement management strategies to maintain genetic diversity, but not enough is known about wildlife, wild dog genetics to make the best decisions. My research involves getting detailed information about genetic differences in wild dogs using whole genome sequencing. This can tell us how similar or different their DNA is by comparing markers within their genomes. We are focusing on wild dogs um, from the Kruger National Park as it supports the largest population in South Africa. In small populations, there is also an increased occurrence of inbreeding or mating between individuals with similar genetic makeup, which further decreases the genetic diversity. Using whole genome sequencing data, we will measure the level of inbreeding and also determine the relationship between individual wild dogs. This is crucial information to use when planning conservation strategies. Lastly, since cases of animal TB have been reported in wild dogs from Kruger, we will also investigate whether genes within wild dogs make them more vulnerable to infection by the bacteria, Mycobacterium bovis, causing the animal TB. Whole genome sequencing will enable us to achieve all our aims. This research will be used to improve wild dog conservation strategies. Wild dogs play a very important role in the ecosystem as predators and their survival is very important for habitat biodiversity. Why the bushbuck for Incaba Biotech's Africa Genomes Challenge? Well, for starters, the bushbuck is highly adaptable, is found in just about every corner of sub-Saharan Africa in two distinct phenotypes, the scriptus and the sylvaticus phenotype. So different are these phenotypes that some scientists even think that they're different species, with mitochondrial DNA placing them as potentially different species, nuclear DNA as the same species, and differences in chromosome number suggesting that they could indeed be different species. The jury's still out. We need genomes to figure this out. Even more interesting, is that every little corner of Africa seems to have its own distinct population of bushbuck marked here in different colors. Nowhere is this better exemplified than in the East African Rift where the montane phenotype has evolved three times and independently each time in a process called convergent evolution where evolution comes up with the same solution but using different starting materials. So I'm sure that you will agree with me. We could all learn a thing or two from the Bushbuck's evolutionary playbook. But to understand that playbook, we need to sequence several genomes. So the Bushbuck, scientifically speaking, would be the obvious choice for this challenge. Not just to figure out the underpinnings of convergent evolution and speciation, but to unravel how all of this biodiversity that we love and cherish came to be in the first place. Hi everyone! Our group's proposal for the competition is to look at the genome biodiversity of snakes given the current envenomation burden. In this regard, snake envenoming in Africa accounts for almost a quarter of the global figure, with over 32,000 deaths and over 6,000 amputations alone in sub-Saharan Africa. And this does not include the countless number of victims who suffer permanent disabilities currently almost reaching crisis point, 
the WHO has itemized envenoming as a highest priority neglected tropical disease since June 2017, with the ultimate aim being cost-effective antivenom supplies. However, antivenoms are not always effective due to variation within snake species. Interestingly, not all the venom composition is toxic, and given the diversity of sub-Saharan African snakes, some derivatives could be harnessed and utilized in the synthesis of clinical drugs. Ultimately stemming from the genomes, snake sequencing product projects in sub-Saharan Africa could contribute knowledge to antivenom production and possibly promising bioactive molecules, thereby celebrating our unique biodiversity. In collaboration with SA Venom suppliers, who have been producing high-quality venom for anti-venom and research purposes since 1964, these past and present members of the Ubuntu group are passionate about the field, and we please ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. Now that you've watched all the videos from our applicants, let's discuss on how you can vote. On the comment section below, we have included the project's names from all our applicants in this insert. So you can simply vote by liking your favorite project. Don't worry, if you missed the project's name, we have also included the video number so you can go double check to see if you voted correctly. This process is open to everyone and we have no limits on the people who can vote for you. You're welcome to invite your colleagues, friends or family to vote for your project, of course, by liking it on our comment section. Voting will be open for the next three weeks and we will announce winners shortly after the closing date and the samples will be collected for sequencing on our PAC Bio system. This has been a lovely journey for the Ingaba Biotech team and we hope you enjoyed it too. We wish you all the best in the Ingaba's Africa Genome Challenge. See you at the winner's table. Goodbye.